Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for aspiring me in a nice movie and a nice topic. And of course, you know, the Equino is talking about the wide variety of the like, opportunities. You are really inspiring the things. So I'm going to try to talk the similar topic in different contexts uh, for today. And uh, at the end, I'm sure we are going to talk the same things. So let's start from who is Modec, I mean, a little. Brazil is a really key market for Modec. So those are the little buzz number. Uh, we are operating 11 FPSO uh, currently in the productions, two FPSO in, under construction, which is SEPI and the Mero one. And we have 2,100 employees in Brazil and uh, op in operation since 2003. So this is Modex 15 years uh, in Modex, uh, Brazil. And with this uh, history, uh, we produce so far 1.3 billion uh, barrel of oil and at the average rate of 680,000 barrel a day at this moment. And which is equivalent to 35% of pre-sort and we are second largest uh, FPS operator in Brazil. And the uh, first one in the area is Petrobras. So we, we have so far delivered 50 uh, floating solutions worldwide and uh, we studied the business from Southeast Asia. It was small and uh, simple and uh, Australia is a little interesting locations with the cyclone so we have disconnectable FPSOs for cyclone avoidance. Our West Africa history is long and but currently we are delivering for deep water in, in West Africa. Quite recently, we uh, delivered one FSO in North Sea. And for Gulf of Mexico, for our US sector, it is a tension leg platform, so that's uh, not uh, FPSO. And uh, one big F FSO in Mexican water. And uh, this is Brazil. And uh, this is a Brazil so far, and we delivered. And all of those facilities are still in the productions. So as I said, 60% uh, in number, uh, is a facility uh, among a modic fleet or close to 80% of the investment is currently done in Brazil. So again, Brazil, we have a largest fleet. So this is our history of installed capacity and we started the first production from with a Fluminense for Shell in 2003. And a massive growth is after pre-sort recovery, uh, discovery, sorry. And uh, in the last decade, uh, Modec has delivered almost one facility every year and one after another. And uh, in 2021, uh, we are going to reach one and a half million per installed capacity after we finish the Mero 1 uh, project. This is a bit interesting picture of FPSO evolution just as an appearance. Okay. Uh, 30 years ago, uh, FPSO was used for early production, so it's a smaller field and uh, only oil productions, and 25,000 barrel a day was our very first FPSO. And uh, last, uh, in the last 10 years, we filled almost all Suez Max top size. So like the right top one is uh, the one in Australia. Uh, that's with a disconnectable turret with a, uh, like a capacity of 80,000 barrel. The bottom two is pre-sort. And this is the different game. And deep water means, of course, deep in water. But deep water means, I mean, the operator want to go too deep, which means, I mean, there's no cheap oil at all. So the field is big and it's deep water. So there's no other way other than using FPSO for production facilities. So the last, last one, 2018, that we just delivered this one, is 150,000 barrel a day of top size. And if you compare this facility to the smallest FPS and Modec ever built, it's so different. Production oil capacity is more than 10 times, and the top size weight in the added is more than 100 times. The smallest one is actually 200 ton top size, and this one is like 30,000, what we are talking about. And the uh, chart period for us is like a field drive. So this is five times more longer than, than uh, the or shortest one. And the biggest difference is the demand for the sustainable water injection or gas handling is huge. 
So as an operators of FTSO, in reality, those facility is water and gas producer, and oil is more or less byproduct. And as, as I show this on this slide, despite the oil production capacity is going to be so gigantic, the oil processing is the smallest contributor for our facility and availability. So what that means? Right? That means a lot of things. This, I mean, the FPSO currently, which we are delivering, is gigantic and huge. And I'm from, from project background, as formerly introduced me. So it is like a three years project and uh, finishing a VLCC and 30,000 tons, or 80,000 tons superstructure whatsoever things and 20 million man hours. So we, uh, we have a fast oil, we have greatest job. This facility can be seen from Google Earth, that's true, right? But in reality, how to build and how to perform safe and steady operations are two different things. And that this greatest misunderstanding, because of appearance, I mean, this is the greatest opportunity, and this is how MODEC has been successful so far. Right? But that is a misunderstanding, and that is leading into the consequence. And the MODEC, in reality, was not an exceptional company. So those are the challenges, and uh, this is the typical pictures after the misunderstanding. Uh, I don't know if MODEC is the only one, but I mean, this is the typical aged facilities. And uh, this is a typical misunderstanding of uh, how to build the facility and how to use the facility are two different things. So with a limited bed space and not optimized uh, management system or design, or well, despite crew are working quite hard, steel corals, GTG stops if it stops, right? and breaks. And uh, cons subsequently, I mean, this is going to hit the financial performance, of course, and we are a charter company. So that's how we have some timeline here. So there was wake up call, and it was not actually Modek by herself to have realized these things. And I'm the happiest person today to stand just beside Mr. Formigri. And he was the one with the former positions, came to our office, head office in Tokyo, and see our CEO. And uh, as usual, Parabench, Parabench, Modek is so important, and you are the greatest partner, right? <laughs> And after the, after, the, uh, after the meeting, or at the end of the meeting, he started to say, by the way. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, in the conversation, most important things comes after, by the way. Right? <laughs> and uh, he actually walks up. Right? By the way, Modek, do you know what your facilities looks like? And do you know about sustainable operations? So that's how we woke up. So we spend lots of you know, firefighting period. Uh, we, we need to repair the facility, as I say, still corrodes. If it's corrodes, we need to replace it. Right? So lots of lessons learned we get, and we did a lots of feedback for design and, uh, the, during those periods. Already, Shidaji Mangarachiba is in the construction. So we did those things, and that, that's and that's. But finally, we reached the point to thought we need a drastic transformation. And uh, that was a transformation moment when we actually transformed from an engineering company to a service company. So th that's why, Mr. Formiga, I said I'm the happiest person to talk today. Right? So it was the transformation that we focused three things, performance, HSE, and people. And uh, I mean, I, I put, put up those things, but this is not exactly rocket science at all. We just came back to basic, and maybe you can go to MB and learn those things. But this basic is so important. So efficiency, sustainability, and the cultural changes but finally, it is reaching to the people, and we empower the people, and those people led the transformation. Again, uh, it's not a marketing thing, so I will not so talk so much about this one, but this is the beginning of transformation. Production efficiency is one of the key uh, KPA for us uh, FPS operators. So this is 2015, this is a global benchmark. We have two facilities in, on this one. And uh, after transformation, one reached first quarter, second reached still in the second quarter. But I'm quite happy because this is a facility you pointed out at the time. And uh, this transformation is led by the people. And they are interested in how to make it better, how the performance may, must be driven. So they start to talk about betterment, those things. So it's about people. Right? So after those painful days, uh, we have cultural changes to the performance-oriented you know, uh, people. 
And uh, we start to think reactive to proactive because, I mean, it's just working with a corroded series, tiry things, and it's boring. Right? Let's talk about the future. Right? Asp aspiration to lead the industry whatsoever. So it's great. Then, it's not because the CEO is yelling about the digital. It's not because uh, worldwide, every, uh, every other uh, people are talking about digital. These digital things came up quite naturally from inside. So uh, that, that's how our digital journey started. So we set up the digital journey in the three elements. And uh, again, this is not quite, I think, uh, unusual one, uh, strategy and whatsoever. But uh, and we can dream. We can dream the strategy, and we can dream forever. But we, we decided to start to move because our people are currently very fostered changes and a betterment whatsoever. So what is the most important thing is, is to deliver something. Right? So we, we put the use case, and we, we start to see the add value because of these technologies. And we have enabled already because people are very much uh, ready to change. And the data, and the data we have data. And the infra infrastructure is available because, because of the supply chain. So we have wealth, wealth of data. And uh, we have lots of heat. So that's a beauty which we have in this country. And uh, we set up six core work stream for this digital journey. But again, we, we set a clear strategy. Let's do fast. Let's feel something first. So our strategy is to do it by ourselves. And let's do it in an agile way to deliver something rather than scratching, a head for, uh, scratching the heads forever. So we picked up smart production and maintenance. And uh, this is an example of, of an advanced analytics model. And uh, this is already uh, uh, implemented in one of the pre sort facilities. And I, I, I'm not going to talk the detail about this one because, I mean, this is data scientist things. And I cannot understand that language anyway. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but this is a dashboard which connects data science into real world and the people. Right? And we chose main A compressor for this one for the simple reason, because this main A is so painful. Right? If this stops, which means we lose the fuel gas, which means we need to burn the GTG on diesel. That costs me. Right? And since we lose the capacity for compressing the gas, we need to flare, but we cannot flare. I mean, I mean it's, it's, it's a rural game here. Right? So what to do? We need to cut back the choke. We cannot produce. So my facility is not available. So what I'm doing? Right? So this is the pain in ourselves. So that's how we picked up this one to develop the use case. And this is working already. So after all those things, uh, Modek currently is quite uniquely positioned. I mean, in the production, production sector, I'm not dreaming to be Equino or Subsea. Right? Uh, this is a production sector. But we had, starting from engineering, construction, procurement, EPC, those project, which is our bread and butter. And now we have operation and maintenance. And we have wealth of data. As I said, 60% in number or 80% of the investment of the fleet is in Brazil. So we have wealth of data and knowledge and uh, innovation through digital. And we have very inspired and empowered people from transformation uh, experience, not from digital. So people are ready. And uh, with those, we have now aspiration to uh, the lead Brazil into safe and steady operations and uh, to be contributor to unlock the known huge potential in Brazil. So in conclusion, from this contextual conversation, we have three lesson, lessons learned. So delivering facilities is the only be beginning. Right? Our challenge in, is the 20 years that follows. For the simple reason is FPSO is not for built. FPS is, FPSO is to produce. So if, if there is no production, what we are doing? Right? So all the newer technologies required for the hardware and the most challenging part is the facility is built and the use for safe, steady operation for 20 years. Right? And this is about the people and the lots of enablers. Digital is machine. Right? And uh, our data and knowledge are the fuel, and our people are the drivers. Right? And uh, one of the biggest enablers is digital at the moment, and we have no question at all. Right? And we are aware of the power of the wealth of data and within ourselves. Right? However, 
the biggest mistake or perception is a belief that fancy technology can change the world, which is not true. Change depends on how the people are forced to use the technology and how it will be a part of management system. People need to use the tool, not to the other way around. So giving tools and forcing them to perform is not the right way. It is for people to use the tool and perform. And last but not least, Brazil has a vast potential, and there's no question at all. And we really aspire to help the country to push the frontier of FPS of performance, which is a large frontier of deep water development in this country. So with this, I conclude my uh, topic, and I, I, I will enjoy the conversation after this one. Thank you.